Traditionally, people have thought of pastures as open areas without trees. In fact, many a landowner has spent innumerable hours bulldozing and clearing trees to establish pastures. A civil pastoral agroforestry practice takes just the opposite approach. It focuses on combining trees, forage, and livestock, which are managed as a single integrated practice. It is important to remember that a civil pasture practice is planned and intentional. Letting cows graze in a natural woodland area without any type of tree or forage management is not considered a civil pastoral practice. Civil pastoral management creates an environment where trees, forage, and livestock can be developed to their full economic potential. This video discusses the benefits associated with a civil pastoral practice looks at planning and design considerations, and finally presents key management requirements necessary for a successful civil pastoral practice. Landowners can realize a variety of benefits from an agroforestry civil pastoral practice. Larry Harper, agriculture journalist and operator of Harper Hill Farm, has implemented a walnut civil pasture practice in Butler, Missouri. I've often been asked, why do you put those walnut trees in your perfectly good pastures? Well, I'm looking for a diversification of income here on Harper Hill Farms. I want to have as many enterprises on the same piece of land as I can to maximize the income. Jim Wilson operates a silvo pasture practice with pecan trees near Nevada, Missouri. Ever since we've been in nut production, we've used cattle to control the height of the grass. We also benefit from the value of the beef that we sell in the fall in addition to the nuts that we harvest. Bill White, a wildlife biologist with the Missouri Department of Conservation on loan to the Natural Resources Conservation Service, operates a silvopasture practice utilizing sheep and Christmas trees near St. Joseph, Missouri. For me, the benefits of agroforestry are that not only do I get an income from my Christmas trees, but I also get an income from the sheep that graze the grass in my trees. Bill Slaughter grazes cattle under walnut trees near Skidmore, Missouri. We rotationally graze, then pull the cows off, let the grass grow back. This way we have a chance to market a crop every year through the calves that we sell in the fall, instead of having to wait 20 or 40 more years for these trees to be mature and sell them in the log. As with all agroforestry practices, thought must go into the design of the practice before it is planted. There are both economic and environmental considerations, as well as decisions related to trees, forage, and livestock, which need to be taken into account when forestry and agriculture are merged. John Fleming, Forestry Regional Supervisor with the Missouri Department of Conservation, has worked with forestry and land use issues in Missouri for more than 21 years. Agriculture and forest land may have separate zoning and land use regulations, along with different tax rates. When planning a civil pasture practice, it's best to check your local land use policies, zoning ordinances, cost share programs, and tax regulations. Your local county office, which deals with land use planning and tax assessment, can address these economic issues. Also, check for regulations which might apply with regard to restrictions or requirements for streamside protection or maintaining wildlife habitat. Local offices of the Agriculture Extension Service, the Natural Resource Conservation Service, or state forestry offices can provide answers with regard to the laws in your area. Tree, forage, and livestock selection are crucial to the success of any silvopasture practice. Gene Garrett, director of the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry, is a national leader in designing and implementing agroforestry practices. When deciding on what trees to plant, ask yourself the following question. What trees and forages do well in my area? Consider growing conditions such as soil and climate, as well as potential markets for your product. Ideally, the tree species you select should be marketable. This includes both the wood itself and other products such as nuts or fruit, which would give you another source of income and additional livestock. They should be high quality and fast growing of such a high value that a medium growing species is acceptable. They should be deep rooted so the trees don't compete with the forage for moisture. They should be drought tolerant or capable of growing on a wet site. They should produce a light rather than a heavy shade 
and be capable of providing the desired products and environmental services, such as erosion control or protection of water quality, that you need. It is important that the trees and forage selected for a silvopasture practice are compatible. Al Decker, University of Missouri Extension Livestock Specialist, has helped producers establish silvopasture practices in Missouri for 10 years. When considering the forage component, you should use a perennial crop that is suitable for livestock grazing. The crop must be compatible with the site characteristics, meaning the soil, temperature, and precipitation. It must be productive under partial shade and moisture stress. It should respond to intensive management practices and be capable of tolerating heavy grazing. In a silvopasture practice, trees, forage, and livestock are developed to their full economic potential. Livestock choices include sheep, goats, horses, turkeys, cattle, chickens, ostrich, emu, and game animals such as bison, elk, caribou, fallow deer, and others. Jim Wilson and Bill White discuss why they chose a particular livestock. We chose cattle to run in here because we fertilize these trees to, to, with nitrogen and it causes uh, the grass to grow and by grazing it gives us extra profit from the beef and it also helps where we don't have to mow as much. I chose Shropshire sheep over all other breeds of livestock for grazing my Christmas trees as worldwide research showed that this was the best breed of livestock for that purpose. Another thing that we like about the trees is that it's cooler on a hot summer day. It's at least 10 degrees cooler down here and the cattle are just scattered out everywhere grazing. Remember, the selected livestock must be compatible with tree, forage, environment, and land use regulations. Also, young trees need to be protected from grazing animals. In general, browsing animals are more likely to eat trees, whereas large grazing animals such as cattle or elk are apt to step on or rub the young trees. Livestock tend to impact hardwood species more than they do the conifers. This means that the livestock may need to be kept off of the pasture until the trees are well established. Another alternative is to devise some type of protection system for the trees, such as an electric fence or unpalatable sprays designed to deter browsing. If you choose to keep the livestock off the area, an annual income can still be gained by cutting the forage for hay. Or you can feed it to your own animals, cutting down on the amount you would need to buy. The bottom line is keep the livestock away from the tree's terminal bud. If they eat this bud, it will limit the growth of the tree. What type of land is best for a silvopasture practice? What is the best design for my land? And where can I get help in designing my silvopasture practice? A silvopastoral practice can be established on any land capable of simultaneously supporting tree and forage growth. However, this practice needs a relatively large land base to sustain timber and livestock production continually. Getting local technical assistance, such as from the Cooperative Extension Service, Natural Resources Conservation Service, or State Forestry Department, is essential to develop a civil pastoral practice matched to the site, the landowner's objectives, and the existing pasture conditions. Are there already trees on the land? What species? What ages are they? How are they spaced? Another thing to consider is whether you want the trees to be even aged, that is all of the same age, or uneven aged, which will require planting over a span of time. And what are your objectives as a landowner? Do you want timber products, environmental, or wildlife benefits? Or do you want all three? Where you place your trees or the pattern will also be an important consideration for successful civil pastoral practice. Trees can be evenly divided over the area to optimize growing space and light for both trees and forage. Or they can be grouped into rows or clusters, which will concentrate the shade and root effects while providing open spaces for pasture production. With conifers, a double row configuration with wide alleyways optimizes forage and wood production. Forage establishment may require some thinning of existing trees and tillage to provide a favorable seed bed. On existing pastures, forage suppression using an herbicide 
may be necessary around newly planted trees for two to three years to allow the trees to establish. Regardless of the pattern, trees will require management. Trees are typically pruned to increase light penetration and to develop a high quality saw logs. Trees being grown for nut production will require less pruning. The livestock grazing should be intensively managed. In a rotational grazing system, a successful silvopastoral practice requires understanding forage growth and managing the timing and duration of grazing to avoid browsing of young tree seedlings or the elongating shoots. Precautions should be taken, such as fencing, to prevent trampling or rubbing of the young trees, as well as overgrazing and soil compaction. By managing trees, forage, and livestock as a single integrated civil pastoral practice, landowners can reduce economic risk by producing multiple products on the same land. Civil pastures can make a landscape aesthetically pleasing. And civil pastoral practices are less likely than concentrated livestock operations to raise environmental concerns related to water quality, odors, dust, noise, disease problems, and animal treatment. In summary, a civil pasture practice provides production and conservation benefits. For more information about this agroforestry practice, contact the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry. Additional information is available from the National Agroforestry Center. Area, local offices of the Natural Resources Conservation Service, State Forestry, or University Extension may also have information on civil pastoral practices. This video has been produced and funded by the University of Missouri Center for Agroforestry within the College of Agriculture, Food, and Natural Resources.